Welcome back to the study. In our last session in Mark chapter 3, we saw Jesus selecting his apostles from the group of disciples that were following him. What Jesus was doing there was taking strides to prepare for the future. These apostles, little did they know, they were going to be sent out with a message after Christ's resurrection and ascension. And that message was the gospel. That message was the fact that there was salvation through God, through Jesus Christ. And they were going to be commissioned to take that gospel forward. Now that's preparing for the future. And that's seeing the vision of the future for God's kingdom. And Jesus was doing that. Now, what we see is whenever we catch a vision for the future and we start going, we start advancing the kingdom of God, we started, we, we start to preach the gospel and perpetuate it to the next generation, the next group of people, what we see there is the enemy will always rear his ugly head. And that's exactly what happens in the verse that we pick up in, in Mark chapter 3, verse 20. And he came home, and the crowd gathered to such an extent that they could not even eat a meal. Imagine how thick the people were in the house. Verse 21. <clears throat> when his own people, that's his family, that's his biological family. When his own people heard this, they went out to take custody, custody of him, for they were saying, he has lost his senses. And the people around Jesus were saying, man, this guy's really flipping out on us. We don't know what he's doing. The scribes who came down from Jerusalem were also saying, he is possessed by Beelzebub, that's Satan, that's another word for the enemy, and cast out demons by the ruler of demons. In other words, he's really uh, not Jesus, the Son of God, who he claims to be, or who we've heard these other demonic voices saying, he's really Satan in the flesh. Now, that's a big statement. When you call the living Son of God, Satan in the flesh instead of God in the flesh. God incarnate, now they're saying Satan incarnate. And, it says, and he called them to himself and began speaking to them in parables. How can Satan, Beelzebub, cast out Satan? In other words, how does it work that way, guys? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom will not stand. Anytime there's division in our relationships, the relationships collapse. When we have arguments, when we get in fights, when we have disagreements, when we don't see eye to eye, it's real easy then to see that relationship crumble. And he's saying this about the kingdom of Satan, and he's also illustrating this as a point in the kingdom of God, too. He says, how can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. If a house, now he brings it down to their level. First he talks macro, now he's talking micro. And he says, if a house, in other words, a family, is divided against itself, that household, that family, will not be able to stand. In other words, there won't be unity, there won't be a situation where they will be supportive and helpful and loving and kind to each other anymore. It'll break apart. If Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand. But he's done. He's finished. Jesus is saying it. Guys, think logically. He's not even really talking heavy-duty spirituality here. He is talking logically. And he's saying, you're saying I'm Satan in the flesh and I'm casting out demons of Satan? Huh? Come on. Get a reality check here. Now, <clears throat> this is where it gets interesting, because these guys are so determined, as we read earlier, to see him annihilated. We're so determined to wipe him out of the religious picture of Israel at that time. <clears throat> They'll say anything to get that done. And that tells you how desperate the enemy is to stop the work of the kingdom of God, to stop the advancement of the gospel and the kingdom of God on this earth. The enemy doesn't want that, and he doesn't like even the kind of talk I'm saying right now. And that doesn't make me special. It's anybody who is for the kingdom, anybody who wants to see the gospel perpetuated. The enemy doesn't like that when there's plans out there like that. And Jesus is saying, you guys <clears throat> got to think logically about this whole situation and reevaluate re who I am. Verse 27, but no one can enter the strong man's house and plunder his property unless he first binds a strong man, and then he will plunder his house. What he's saying is, guys... You don't get it. You can't do what you're talking can be done. And he gives them a literal illustration. You don't go into my house to rob them, especially if they're stronger than you are, and expect to be able to get away with it unless you have a way of going in and binding them, putting them into a situation where they cannot retaliate with you. 
And he said, this is the whole problem with you calling me Satan in the flesh and you telling me that I'm casting out Satan's devils because I'm Satan. That doesn't make sense. And this doesn't either. You can't go in and steal somebody's. I can't. Satan isn't going to go in <clears throat> and steal in his own house. You're not going to do that. Guys, think logically. Sometimes we get so desperate, we don't think right. And that's where we really have to listen to Christ, because Christ always has the right answer and the right method and the right way for us to live. And we just have to stop and think sometimes. And these guys were so desperate to get rid of him. They were so angry because he was speaking the truth. Now you'd say, why, why would they be angry because he speaks the truth? Because it wasn't the truth they lived by. It wasn't the truth that they wanted to to hear. And so many times we don't want to hear the truth. And Jesus is saying, guys, think it out here. Think logically. The truth is the truth and it will always be the truth.